very good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on Super Screen Weekend News, a news program that brings you happenings and events in Nigeria. I am Precious Amayu, and now we begin with today's news, where the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, have closed a case at the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal. After a series of proceedings, which lasted over two months at the tribunal sitting in Abuja, the petitioners closed their case on Friday. They called a total of 62 witnesses to testify, in addition to the tendering of documents to prove its case before the tribunal. The tribunal therefore adjourned proceedings until July 29 for the commencement of defense. Do you recall that the opposition and its candidates are challenging the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari in the February 23rd poll? And on the Edo Assembly crisis, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating the ongoing crisis rocking the Edo State House of Assembly says justice will be served. Chairman of the committee, Abdullahi Sabi, disclosed this when he received 12 of the 14 agreed members elect of the Edo State House of Assembly in Abuja. Sabi noted that the Senate will hear from all the actors in the crisis and find constitutional ways to restore sanity to the State Assembly. Can function and deliver dividends of democracy to electorates. I want to assure you that the Senate is concerned about this development. We are in a democracy, and like we all know, democracy is a game of number. At all times, those who are in majority will always have their way, just like we say, those in minority will have their say. That is the beauty of democracy, and uh, the Senate is determined to ensure that we do justice to this subject matter, not because of anything, but because we must save democracy from being abused, from being dis you know, defined by different actors anyhow they so wish. And I think uh, the issue at hand is one that we really want to look at so that the provisions of the Constitution will be looked at critically and how these things happen will also be examined very critically. A member-elect of the Edo House of Assembly, Washington Osifu, who spoke on behalf of his colleagues, accused, accused Governor Ogodwin Obasaki of orchestrating the crisis. The options are also that the National Assembly have a constitutional responsibility to do what they are doing. So I think I want to, I want to end it there. Oh the yes, very, uh, we are very impressed. We are very impressed. It's the process of, re of resolving the crisis in Edo. We have confidence in the National Assembly that they will do not just the neutral, but what is uh, constitutionally stipulated. The Senate's ad hoc committee will meet with the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Sushomole, who has also been alleged to be one of those behind the crisis. And our procession has been held in honor of late Obiano Jew Elizabeth Undubusichuku and other Nigerians who were killed in South Africa as a result of xenophobia. Speaking in an interview with Super Screen News, these Nigerians under the ages of Center for Protection of Nigerians in Diaspora called on governments to ensure safety and protection of Nigerians abroad. Uh, Nigerians are experiencing this level of brutality globally. They are getting killed every day, almost in every part of the world. And uh, it is important that uh, Nigerians are protected everywhere by governments of countries where Nigerians might be resident, whether they are legal or illegal immigrants. And nobody deserves to be killed or slaughtered or be maltreated or tortured. But we must state very categorically that uh, the respects citizens get abroad uh, are usually uh, as a result of the respect they get at home. There are Asian countries where Nigerians are being sentenced to death all the time. They sentence Nigerians to death in South Africa, and I mean, in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. One found out later that uh, they were victims of uh, official negligence, but our government did nothing about it. So all of that must cease at once. The killings of Nigerians in diaspora is too much. The killings is too much, not just in South Africa. This thing happens every day in India. And our governments are so reluctant to take action. So it's too much. We can no longer condone such a thing in Nigeria. We don't pray for death of anyone, whether some, the, the person is rich or the person is poor. While they vehemently condemn the killing of Nigerians by South Africans, they urge them to desist from the act.
We are Nigerians. We are human beings. We are not animals. We shouldn't be slaughtered. What have we done? I remember when the South Africans were going through their appetite. We were very welcoming. They came here. They schooled here. We even, my mom even fed many of them in her home. Is this the, is this the response? The is this the reward for our hospitality, for our love? This is wrong. Even in Ghana here, we are being maltreated. This is no way to treat Nigerians. Nigerians are wonderful people. Forget what you've been told that we are lazy, we are corrupt. Nigerians are hardworking, loving people, and they don't deserve to be slaughtered like animals. So and in the past, sector solar energy has been identified as a viable solution to Nigeria's erratic power supply. This was a submission of a key stakeholder in the solar energy supply chain, Olu Adenodi, and the principal officer of Solomic Energy in Lagos. Adenodi made this known during the introduction of the first off-grid power system in Lagos. We cannot have the energy from the grid as he has rightly said that grid is not stable. So why are we wasting time? Why don't you go into alternative energy? Why don't you go into a decentralized source of energy? This is a typical example of a decentralized energy, whereby you don't wait to get government to supply energy to you. Because we know for years now, we've been saying Nigerian energy generation is at 5,000 megawatts. How long are we going to sit and stay in 5,000 megawatts? How can 5,000 megawatts get to every home across the over how many population of millions of people in the country? So why don't you step out and get your own energy, renewable energy, clean energy, uninterrupted energy, by having a solar solution energy? Power is life. Without power, you won't be here. Without power, I mean, lives have been lost. I just told you about what we're doing in Lassoot. You know what we have to do? Before we intervene in Lassoot, lives have been lost on the theater table. When they conduct the surgical operations and the process, NEPA strikes, you know? They are not referred the switch to generator. That person has given up the ghost. And uh, you know that is the bane, that is the one the infrastructure that has been our that has been suffering Nigeria and Nigerians. But Nigerians have suffered from over the years. It's like the what they say, give me first the kingdom of God, and every other thing will follow. Once we are able to solve the problem of power, communication problem is solved, uh, health is solved. Uh, research is solved. People cannot even do research because they don't have access. Some people who are working on planes, how to develop planes, how to develop um, innovations. Without power, there's no way they can do it. Government and private individuals were urged to embrace solar as the enumerated advantages and disadvantages of the solar power energy. The only way out to overcome is the climate change that is ravaging us now. God have known that at times rain do not fall when they're supposed to fall. And when they fall, they are scanty. Or when they are scanty, when, they, when at times it gets too much, it get, get flooded. So these are the direct causes of climate change. These are not as it used to be. Why is this is so is because of the carbon monoxide that we burn all the time. Your generators, your cars, your constant fumes. So the way to salvage this is to go clean. I want to talk about clean energy. That's the energy from the sun, which is free, which has no side effects. You know, you don't need to inhale carbon monoxide. So in terms of your health, in terms of long life, you are all pray for. Anytime you go to church, you pray for long life, you pray for prosperity. You need to start working on all that. We all know solar is not cheap, but we are also looking at also overcoming our aspect of it. And we take a short break now. When we return, we'll bring you some reports that made the news during the week. Do stay with us. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us now to the reports that made the news during the week. The Senate on Tuesday called for a national security summit to proffer solution to the rising state of insecurity in Nigeria. On Tuesday's plenary, Senator Ayo Akinye Luri raised Order 42 and 52 of the Senate standing rules over the death of Funke Olakunri, the second daughter of Afeni Fere leader Ruben Fasharanti. Barely 18 months after a security summit was held to profile solutions to recurring cases of killings, kidnappings, banditry and other criminal activities in the country, the Senate at Tuesday's plenary called for another security summit. 
The lawmakers, one after the other, expressed their concerns and equally justified the call for a fresh security summit. The cruel mother of Mrs. Funke Olakuni, daughter of Pa Ruben Fashionati, the non Nigerian leader of Afghan Infantry on Friday, 12 July 2019, by some armed gang who opened fire on her vehicle and other commuters at Kajola or a road in Ondo State. The Depl deplorable state of insecurity on this express road has now reached an alarming state and has significantly eroded peace and free movement of people with palpable fear and rising tension across the nation, thus giving several scattering speculative analysis in the media about the state of the nation. Must not succumb to the insinuation that what is happening is being perpetrated by a particular ethnic group. About two weeks ago, there was kidnapping in the creek in the river area of Fondo State in a, ta a town called Agadagba. The perpetrators were arrested and they were found to be indigents of the state. So I want to plead that we should approach this in, uh, in, a, in a surely. Federal government has a responsibility to protect lives and properties. We also have responsibility to look at our environment and see what we need to do. So I will call on the federal government, I will call on the Senate, I will call on all the security agencies to come together, aggregate all the resources and all the, 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 the resolutions that have been taken before now to see how they can come up with a holistic approach that will solve these problems. There's nothing that we do here that pales if we don't get our security situation right in this country. It has major economic impact for us in this country. And we cannot watch every day, coming here, mourning, grieving, having one minute of silence, as innocent Nigerians are being killed and no action is, taking, is being taken. There's a feeling of hopelessness, helplessness, that one is feeling that nothing we do here has effect. Rolling on the motion, the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, said stakeholders should immediately converge in a robust national security summit to discuss and address the situation. The security uh, situation is all over the country. It is unfortunate that we had this incident. I will therefore uh, suggest, like some of our colleagues uh, in their presentation mentioned, we should have a one robust national summit on the security situation of this country. The Senate, however, observe a minute silence in honor of Funke Olakurin, daughter of Afeni Ferris leader, Pas Fasoronti. And freedom of information remains a tool for promoting transparency and accountability in government and other sectors. This was a submission of a law professor from the University of Lagos, Ayoade Ashenua, on Wednesday at the public hearing on freedom of information organized by Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, in Lagos. The law provides um, the framework for accessing information. The law offers us a significant paradigm shift from where we needed to appeal and beg for information to a framework that compels public institutions to collect, collate, and make readily accessible information to the general public. Then there are the areas where you will not be provided information, must not. However, even under the must not, there is a provision for appeal to the courts and that is because the law knows that the courts can sit in camera to consider whether even in those cases where largely it's about national defense, security issues, truly the decisions have been predicated on reasonable grounds. Freedom of Information Act will ensure that information records are provided to citizens to demand for accountability. With the Freedom of Information Act, if those in 
government at those level sees that people can ask and demand for information. I believe the canker worm of corruption will go down. Deputy Chairman of Sarab, Ulu Adabilari, said the rationale behind the FOI public hearing is to educate citizens on practical guidelines to access information from government offices in Nigeria. What Serap stands for is transparency and accountability in the fight against corruption. So, for instance, we have resources allocated to the education sector. You don't know how much, you don't know how much is being spent. So how can you even demand for accountability? All of us in our different neighborhoods, we see the dilapidated schools and we, have all, we all have one issue or another we experience directly or vicariously about the falling standard of education. So how do you advocate at government? How do you ask questions? if you don't have information. So what the FYI Act will do is it's a, it gives you the legal backing to ask for information, to get it and then make requests of those in power. Lagos State is set to benefit from the British government's £38 billion mobile development program. UK Minister of State in the Department for International Development, Harriet Baldwin, disclosed this on Tuesday when she paid a courtesy visit to the Lagos State Deputy Governor, Obafemi Hamzat. Superscreens Mike Osemeke has the details. The place of technology in the development of any society cannot be overemphasized. And with a city as cosmopolitan as Lagos, it is imperative that technology becomes part of everyday lives. Speaking during a courtesy visit to the Lagos State Deputy Governor, the team of the United Kingdom Department for International Development, led by the Minister of State, Harriet Baldwin, said the extension of the Mobile for Development program in Lagos is geared towards assisting citizens to access financial services through mobile phones. Today I'm very excited that I'm announcing an extension, a £38 million extension of our uh, Mobile for Development program. This is a program working with GSMA, the mobile technology uh, organization, uh, which helps uh, develop uh, financial services that can be delivered through the mobile phone. And this is one of the most innovative areas in Africa at the moment, and it's something that will help many, many millions of people, some 27 million people around the world, many of them here in Lagos and the rest of Nigeria, uh, to be able to uh, do financial services and buy things through their mobile phones. So that's a very exciting announcement. I'm also going to be meeting a range of the uh, inspiring women entrepreneurs that you have here in, in Lagos, Your Excellency. In his response, Lagos State Deputy Governor Obafemi Hamzat lauded the program, saying it will bring advancement to the state in the areas of health, agriculture, and technology, amongst others. Lagos needs to plug in into a lot of these areas, like we said. And Lagos, even though it's subnational, is bigger than a lot of some African countries in terms of economy, in terms of population, and everything. We said it clearly. You know, interestingly, Honourable Minister, we have 1,017 primary schools. That is almost the same number as in Ghana. So we are really a country. We do another country. So in terms of that, I think it, it will be very impactful when the government DFID deals with Lagos at that level. Because it has a lot of impact on the law of people. The population is close to 24 million now. So, and when we are able to solve those problems, it, it translates to other parts of the country. And therefore, solving Lagos issues solves a lot of Nigerian issues. And as we know, for every Af four Africans, one is in Nigeria. The Mobile Development Program of the United Kingdom is a mobile financial service aimed at enabling those at the grassroots in assessing funds for their businesses and household appliances using their mobile phones. Mike Osemeke, reporting for Superscreen News. A former legal practitioner, Barrister Mondo Bani, on Thursday challenged the suspension of a state local government chairman and 37 local council development area chairman, councillors, and other political functionaries in the state. Addressing journalists in his office, Ubani described the suspension as illegal and unconstitutional. The recent decision of the Supreme Court in regards to 
suspension or dissolution of uh, local government council is that the governor cannot, the state house of assembly cannot, even if there is existing law enacted by the state uh, house of assembly to do that, that will be running contrary to the express provisions of the constitution that guarantees democratically elected uh, local government uh, council uh, officials. And so that remains the position of the law. So even if there is any law that gives them that power, they cannot even do it. They cannot remove a properly, validly elected local government official. That is the law. And so we have uh, tried to use uh, uh, peaceful means by writing them, believing that they would have uh, paid attention to the to the letter, but they have refused. So we now need to alert the Ogun State indigents of what their government is doing. Maybe peradventure they will reach out to them so that we can have this matter resolved. They ask them to come back. Their tenure will expire in October. They have only a few months to, to... And then they have not been paying them their salaries. They just locked them out. The LG and LCDA chairman insist they were duly elected and maintain that the Eighth House of Assembly denied them rights to fair hearing. As it stands, they are set to challenge the State Governor Dakwa Abiodu and the State House of Assembly in court. Politics is what is playing itself out. Um, we have not been suspended for any legal um, reasons. And to even say we can be suspended, it's illegal in its, in its, in its right sense. So we, we've, we've relied on the mandate of the people that was given to us on October 16, 2016. October 10, 20, 8, 2016. We were sworn in on October 10, 2016. The tenure runs out on October 10, 2019. Everything we have done as elected council chairman, 57 of us, we have 57 um, vice chairmen, we have 57 SLGs, we have over 350 councillors that are affected by this um, illegal purported suspension. We did not do anything in office to serve the bidding of anyone. As such, when Prince um, Dr. Um, Dr. Abiodun came into office, we believe that the same way is enjoying the mandate of the people. It's the same way we have the right to enjoy the mandate of the people till 10th of October. The unconstitutional and unlawful suspension of the chairman be reversed with immediate effect to enable them to complete their tenure, which is to expire on the 10th day of October 2019. Two, that all their entitlements for the past 33 months, which they have been denied, as stated above, above be computed and paid to them forthwith with effect from 10th day of October 2019 when they were duly sworn into office as LG LCDA chairman to the 10th day of October 2019 when they are expected to leave office. We also demanded the payment of 500 million naira as damages for the infringement on their fundamental right as guaranteed by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended and the hardship they have suffered as a result of the willful deprivation of their entitlement as council executive. And that's our package tonight. Many thanks for watching Super Screen Weekend News. I am Precious Amayu and many thanks to the crew for making this happen. Do have a lovely night.